Hey guys, so today I'm going to be doing a extremely requested video and that is to do a kind of overview of my study abroad experience and this video is kind of based off the questions that I got asked throughout all of my vlogs. I did vlog my entire study abroad experience, all of my different travel trips, which is really fun. So if you haven't seen them and are interested in studying abroad, I would recommend to check them out. I'm just going to jump right into it because no time like the present. This video is going to cover my program and questions surrounding the academic part of it, which includes my internship that I did while I was there, and also the travel portion. And then if you guys like it, I will definitely do a packing video because I had tons of questions about packing. Starting out with my study abroad program. So my program was through my university. I go to the University of Minnesota Twin City. They use CAPA. It's C-A-P-A -A, and it's International Education and they have programs in a few different places including Australia, like Rome, and then the one that I did which was in London. My program, it was not through a university. It was like kind of partnered with Imperial University in London if you know what that is so the professors I believe were from that university but all of my schooling was done in a separate building with only students in my program which I think was about 200 students I lived in Earl's Court which is on the western side of the city near Kensington and I loved where I lived it was right next to my school I could walk I felt extremely safe the entire time I got asked a ton of questions about how I traveled while doing school and I only took three classes while I was abroad. So I took an international marketing class. I took a advertising class, like advertising in London class, and then I took an internship class. And all three classes were able to transfer and like count towards my home university, which I was really lucky because some people just have to take random credits, which I think is unfortunate. And then each of my classes were three hours a day and then just one time a week. So it's actually a different day. I like did my makeup and hair and outfit the same and I'm trying to pretend like it's the same day that I filmed this video. But I totally forgot to talk about my internship. I like just didn't talk about it at all in the video. I did have an internship while I was abroad in London, which is a little bit out of the ordinary for study abroad. And it really just depends on what you want to get out of it if you think that an internship would be a good fit for you. I will say from my point of view, if I were to do it again, I probably wouldn't do an internship just because it was extremely time consuming. It was 20 hours a week, so I had two full days where I was out of the house from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. at night, and then also a half day. So basically my schedule was work all Monday until 6 p.m. Tuesday work and then I had class um, which was like a, a supplement to my internship. And then I would go on Wednesday and work another full day until 6 p.m. And then on Thursday I would have my two classes which were each three or four hours long. So I, again I would be gone from like 9 to around 5 p.m. And then on Fridays I would leave for a trip and I'd be gone from you know sometimes Thursday night or really early Friday morning until Sunday night. So as you can see the internship really brought in like no free time because I didn't even have a Sunday regroup day which is why personally I you know thought that it was really difficult but if you you know don't travel as much studying abroad or you really want to get work experience then I do think it's a great option I really enjoyed my internship I worked at a fashion agency called BLD and just to give you a little brief we did kind of like the wholesale side to luxury and premier brands in London we were kind of like the middleman between the designers and their collections which we had housed in our showroom and then different boats boutiques and department stores would come in and buy from us. I worked with some really great people and got to be really integrated into like the London culture which was awesome. Once you take into consideration homework, um, working out when you can and meal prep and making dinner and that kind of thing and then if you want to you know have any free time to explore the city or go out with your friends. It just it got to be a lot. I just think you should think about it because it is you know, it's a different experience than to someone who's just 
study. So moving into the travel portion of this video, I got so many questions about how I was able to travel so much. No, it was not through my program. I know some programs offer traveling. One of my friends who studied in Florence got to do a week in Sicily, Italy, where their whole program went down for a week. And I wish my program would have had something like that, a little bit more organized. We scheduled all of our own trips. Most of my friends that were studying did a lot of weekend trips. If you were studying abroad and you're looking for flights, the website I would recommend is skyscanner.com. So Skyscanner is all the cheap airlines in Europe and people were like, oh, it's so expensive or it's so cheap. I don't know, everyone has their own opinions. Most of our flights were between $100 and $200 for the weekend. If you fly like Wednesday to Tuesday on off days of the week, you can find $20 or $30 flights. And then for housing on our trips, we used hostelworld.com. Airbnb it was a huge one and then hotels. I would recommend Airbnb over hostels However, there are some hostels that are really nice, but we also stayed in some that aren't very nice Me and Lucy had one random roommate and it was it was weird. I didn't like it at all But the other times we had our own room in our hostel like in Lisbon um, It felt pretty much like a hotel. It was just communal bathrooms and a lot of times the hostels have breakfast Provided those are things that we look for like Wi-Fi free breakfast Airbnb is you use them here It's the same thing over in Europe um, You can get good deals if you book early then hotels one thing that I have to say for hotels if for some reason you have to stay for one night somewhere stay in a hotel by the airport me and Lucy like stayed in a hostel in Geneva and it was such a pain and a headache and we had a random roommate and it was uncomfortable and there was no Wi-Fi and the plugs didn't work and it was just such a hassle when we could have paid like 20 more dollars to stay in a hotel right next to the airport and because we were only there for one night and it it's just like sometimes you have to weigh the benefits versus the cost also you end up spending more money on like transportation to get the hot to the hostel and back transportation we usually used uber if they had it Taxis, like in Barcelona, they don't have Uber, they only have taxis. The taxis are really reliable. In Paris, we walked the entire time, so sometimes there are circumstances like that, but then there are also circumstances where you're staying in the Amalfi Coast and you have to train from Naples to Amalfi. So it just, like I said, depends. In terms of scheduling trips, we honestly didn't schedule them that far in advance. I know Interlochen we booked to the week of and it was a lot more expensive. So the more advance you plan them, doesn't necessarily mean it'll be cheaper, but most likely it will be cheaper. But the problem with that are other friends who planned out every single weekend the week that they got there and then their schedule was really hard to meet up with people, which I thought was one of the funnest parts about going abroad was meeting up with your friends all over Europe. It's just such a surreal like feeling. I think it's better to have a little bit of flexibility, maybe plan one or two of your more expensive trips in the future and then and maybe pick something the weekend of that has really cheap flight. That can always work too. Talk to a lot of other students. Everyone has recommendations. So just talk to as many people as you can. Pretty sure that's like everything I wanted to cover in this video. If you have any other questions, please leave them down below and I will try to answer all of them. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you found it helpful. I don't even know if me rambling and talking is helpful, but thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in my next video and subscribe. I'm so tired. Uh...